Christian Unified, welcome to chapel. If you're having a good morning, say yeah. Oh man, y'all are awake this morning. What's going on? I know you're excited for our chapel speaker, Victor Marks, today. I'm so excited about it. And I want to go ahead and have everybody stand to your feet. We're going to get ready to rock. Here, I want you to find somebody beside you, look at them, look deep in their eyes, and say, it's about to go down. If they look like they're not awake yet, give them a little shoulder nudge. Wake them up. Wake them up. Slap them around a little bit. In love. In love. You know? You, sometimes you got to. We talked about this. Sometimes you got to wake your friends up. Say, hey, we're focusing. If y'all are ready to focus on God this morning, say yeah. Hey, I want to invite y'all again. I know y'all I know get used to hearing a lot of the same things. One time I had... Uh, I'm not going to say who, but when somebody came up to me and they're like, man, sometimes I feel like teachers say the same things. Sometimes I feel like pastors say the same things. Bible teachers say the same things. People give us a lot of the same advice. And man, I want to challenge y'all. If you've been hearing a lot of the same advice, a lot of the same wisdom from mentors or teachers or parents or leaders that you have in your life, I want to challenge y'all to start responding to it. You know, like sometimes we just hear it over and over. And so y'all have heard me way too many times say, hey, let's really focus on God this morning, right? Like, y'all heard me say that. But let's respond to that. Let's respond to the fact that God's with us. He's in here with us, and he's worthy of our praise. Are y'all with me on that? Let's pray, and then we'll, we'll get to praising God. Father, we are grateful that when we pray right now, you actually hear us. God, we know that we don't just lift our voices to empty air, but God, when we pray to you, you hear us. Lord, we know that you are such a good father, that you care about us, that you think about us. No matter what the worries are in this room, God, there's nothing that's too big or too small for you to take on. There's nothing too small in here that you don't care about. There's nothing too big that you can't handle. So God, would you help us to just get out of the way of you working in our lives? Would you help us to remove the distractions? Gosh, God, whether it's something on our phone, whether it's a friend, would you just help us to get it out of the way and to just focus on you for the next few minutes that we're in here. God, we love you. God, we need you. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Let's worship
There's nothing worth more than love. to rain. Lord, that's such a blessing to us. Lord, please help the chapel speaker and bless what they have to say. And please help us to be receiving and respectful and to really have a great rest of our week and next week and then a great spring break. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Amen, y'all. If, uh, if you're impressed or you maybe even surprised that the person around you is focused on God or you just saw it, just look at them and go, hey, good job, good job. They're focused on Jesus during worship. If, if it didn't happen, look at them and say, got to get it next time. Oh, dang, there it is. Y'all got good friends sitting around you. You'll get it next time for sure. Well, Victor Marks is going to share with us in chapel. We're so excited to hear what God is going to speak through him. We're going to show a video, and then after the video, y'all give that big, warm, Christian unified welcome to Victor Marks. Listen, we are in uh, Northwest Mosul. You can't burn me. I'm the igniter. There's ISIS plenty around. Uh, we were able to deliver some powdered milk for babies. I'm never through until I make it. If I had a cow, I could just set up a little <laughs> stand. <laughs> Well, thank y'all so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. And uh, Pastor Grant, thank you again. Well, y'all good looking bunch. Happy and chipper. Would y'all like to be introduced to my dog? Yes. This is Scout. Scout is a, uh, she's almost six. Uh, she is a Belgian Malinois. There was a movie that just came out, Dog. Yeah, and uh, same, same breed, same training. And she goes with us overseas. She's the one that you saw in there. But uh, seats, plots, plots, for that weight. So, seats. She's one of the few dogs that actually face ISIS fighters. And then within two hours, kids we had recovered or rescued are playing with her. So it's a very difficult switch when you're talking about working canines. Right now, she's got a gift of focusing in on sinners. <laughs> Randy, she's kind of... No, who's... But she's a sweet, sweet girl. Uh, actually, girls and kids, phooey, come on, let's go. Girls and uh, women and children can, uh, there's a lot of sin happening in that region. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. Maybe we just need to pray today for that area. Is that junior hires over there? What's going on? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, she's, uh, she's what we call, uh, she's meek. It's power under control. So she's super sweet. Uh, but afterwards, you know, if, if anyone, who, I don't know if we'll have time to meet and greet with her, but yeah, uh, you can pet her. But would y'all like to see her do something? Yes. Real quick, uh, uh, let me have a threat come up here. No. Sir, you need to back up. Really, you need to back up. This no. Okay, ready. Uh, uh, take. Well, oh, good, 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 good. Take good. Let's just worship the Lord, Father. We just thank you. We thank you for the giftedness of this dog. All right. <laughs> Scout, out. Leave it. Hey. Out. We'll bite them. Out. Who that? Let's go. Let's give Mr. Jeff a big hand and the Scoutster. You can tell she's happy. <laughs> so, um, 
Anyway, she's not a mean dog, despite what you just saw. She's a trained professional that learns to uh, target and hit bad people, but then also she's trauma relief, and she helps me as a service dog as well. So why don't you, I'll prove it to you, she ain't mean. Come on up here, sir. Why don't you take my dog for me? Fun, huh? Well, all right. So we have a few minutes this morning I want to visit with y'all. Um, I know chapel services at times can get uh, routine. And you're like, oh, okay, what's going to happen today? Uh, and one of the reasons why I know that is I, I used to go to a Christian school for a short amount of time when I was in high school. My mother put me in one. It was, you know, it was kind of like a juvenile center for me. She's like, please help my kid. He ain't right. And uh, I, I think what I remember is me trying to take a core group of students and explain to them that God made marijuana and it's okay if we smoke it because he made it. <laughs> it didn't align with their values. And uh, I didn't stay there much longer. So that gives you an idea so, uh, of kind of my background. Uh, I'll, I will share with you some of the things that formed my view of life, which is very negative uh, because of injustices I, that I saw. And I'm here this morning, fresh coming out of Iraq, my 16th time to go to Iraq, number one six. And I was excited because when I come back from overseas, the first place I speak, I know there's something very special that I think God wants to speak to a few of you. Not every one of you are going to get it. That's okay. But some of you, this will really be impacting enough for outcome change in your life forever. The reason why I know I've been doing this a long time, uh, over 30 years I've been speaking to uh, young people, and I mean from schools to juvenile prisons, and our ministry just expanded, which I can't believe I'm still doing it, or live compared to what some of the stuff that we went through. But this last time in Iraq, I have a picture I showed some of the staff uh, in the green room. We helped recover a girl who was kidnapped at 11 years old by ISIS. She was held captive for seven years. Seven years. Y'all's age, the entire time of her teenage years from 11 to now she just turned 18, she was held captive as a sex slave to ISIS. And we had her in our home in Iraq 48 hours, 48 hours after she was free. Uh, we, we call her Lucy. And Lucy had a broken nose and then a broken back. And the picture I was showing, she's in a doctor's office. But you know what's amazing? one of the happiest girls I've ever met. I couldn't believe her, dis her demeanor. She was just, she was so filled with joy. For one reason, because she was free. One reason. She's sitting there and I'm thinking, seven years you've been a captive of ISIS. Horrible things. Things so horrible that some girls your age chose to get burned alive in a cage versus become sex slaves. ISIS is an evil terrorist group that ultimately it's, it's, it's evil that God hates because it's all fueled by the devil, who I, I know evil is real. I've seen it up close and personal. But girls, let me just encourage you, whatever you're going through right now, it's not as bad as what Lucy's gone through. Your parents won't upgrade you to the 13. Dang them. Call CPS. Your curfew is what? 1030. Ah, they don't love you. Run away. Get free from your parents. Best advice I can give you on the whole parent thing if I never said anything else, I hope you would get this. Girls, 
and young men, trust your parents. Mostly when you don't agree with them. They've been through the minefield of life, and if they've got a certain position on something, what they're telling you is based out of love. And it may rub you wrong, and it may seem restrictive, but they love you. Now, if you're getting abused or hurt by a parent, call me. Text me. Because that's where I'm very comfortable in conflict. <laughs> As guises. But I think if we had to roll the dice, most of you come from uh, are in a pretty good position, one parent or both, or maybe a grandparent. But look at you. You're at one of the premier schools in America that teaches values and morals and God's way of thinking and a worldview. That's why I was also excited to come here today because let me tell y'all, does anybody agree with me that our nation is kind of messed up right now? Raise your hand. All right, what about our world? Is our world messed up? Yeah, guess what? You're the future. Yeah, I'm not the one gonna solve the problem. It's you, Big Daddy. Yeah, right there, <laughs> you. It's all on you, brother. When you're doing those two-a-days, you remember you're training for national and world change. I'm serious, you guys are the ones that are gonna make a difference. I'm not kidding, look at me. I'm heading towards 60. I know I don't look it, but you know. <laughs> wear my youth shirt. But listen to me, I promise you, we're relying on y'all. We are relying on y'all. And you know what? God had you born during this time period and he's placed you here to equip you for the mission ahead. I'm convinced of it. That's why I said, I, I'll come and talk. We turned down hundreds and hundreds of speaking requests because I'd rather be out saving Lucy's, uh, or doing the things that we do, than I want to come and speak to some Christian school. I spoke to one that I spoke to, and they were horrible. I was, I was like, what the heck is wrong with you people? Some of them started laughing. I was telling my story, and I had to hurt their feelings a little bit. And I'm telling the staff, I was like, what, what kind of school y'all got here? Is this a Christian school? Is it a discipleship school, or is it an evangelistic school? But you better stop mixing all this, because bad kids are ruining good kids. And if you're a bad kid, knock it off. Take advantage of this place. And if you're a good kid, when somebody's trying to move you in a way that you shouldn't go like I was trying to do to kids at Christian school, just tell them, knock it off. That's what I would tell my dog, knock it off. And she's like, you sure? Yeah, knock it off. You're going to get corrected. I'm excited for y'all. And... Um, I told you I believe in darkness because I've, I've seen it. And a lot of you, a lot of you hear a lot about the Word of God, about God, but your faith is very weak. Your belief in it all is weak. And you're kind of focusing just on yourself. And, and of course we have to, but your growth faith-wise, you, you really need to be open to that this is a real war with, between good and evil. One of the ways I've seen evil manifest, I was at a youth prison for girls, ladies, this, and it was teenagers. And I was in there teaching a little Bible study to these gals, y'all's age. It was in Texas. And I'm like, uh, so I'm in, and I'm teaching the Bible a little study, and this girl starts going, uh, I'm like, actually, she was on my left, so I'm not saying this is the sin area, but I was like, what the heck? And then she kept, she kind of increased this. Uh, I'm like, okay, we should sing a song. Michael, roll the boat. I'm like, everybody sing, sing. We got to drown this girl out. And then she started clawing herself, 
And she started speaking with a man's voice that wasn't from this country. It was like, Wah! and I was like, Ew. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can face ISIS, but this is, this is all the girls hopped up. They ran to the corner of the room and I'm like, you know, trying to back up being cool. And I'm not afraid. I ain't scared completely. And all of a sudden the guards stopped me. The guard, it's a youth prison, maximum security. They stopped me. I'm like, you know, I gotta take care of that, man. That's your... They go, this ain't a prison deal. This is a religious spiritual deal. You help her. I was like, ain't my job. I'm... They go, it ain't our job. And this is what they said. Something comes on her every now and then. She has power and it's on her now. That's why everybody's freaking out. Gang girls freaking out. And this girl's like this. Ugh. I'm like, yeah. They're like, aren't you a preacher? I'm, I'm not good at this. I am not. I'm, I'm better at shooting bad people. Uh, this whole, uh, I said, all right, take her to her prison cell and like shut the door so she can't like eat my jugular or something and, and I'll talk to her. So they bring her. I walk over there. Nobody comes with me. It's just me. And they didn't shut the door. It's wide open. And she's sitting right there. I'm like, oh. Hey, hi, hey, hey, I'm like, I get down, and as soon as I squatted down, she looks up, and this voice comes out her and says, I guess you're going to say I'm possessed. <laughs> I don't even watch scary movies. Are you all with me? Hey, anybody, would that freak anybody else out? It, yeah, if a 15-year-old girl... You know, looks at me and goes, I guess you're going to say I'm possessed. I thank God he's so personal to each of us uh, that when he puts his Holy Spirit in us, he knows our personality, what it takes to kind of deal with stuff. And you know what my personality is? I like funny thoughts. I just like off the wall funny thoughts. And guess what thought came on my mind as I'm sitting there and this demon speaks out? I guess you're going to say I'm possessed. I go, I, I don't think I have to. It's kind of obvious. <laughs> and this demon gets mad. <laughs> and he, sir, I'm like, hey, you know, calm down. And, <laughs> and then I was like, this is really real. And uh, I'm like, well, what, what, what would Jesus do? What did he do? He talked to a bunch of them. There was a bunch of demon stuff in there. And then I remembered, because I was nervous. I, I said, demon, what is your name? <laughs> Tell me your name. I was yelling like the demon can't hear. I'm like, hey, tell me. I don't know. And then this demon goes, I am Satan. Right? Say, Satan? I was like, and I started to get scared, and then I felt the Holy Spirit say, hey, be you. Relax. And then I said, I was like, is that what a capital S or a small C? Yes, I don't, you know, because I don't think the big guy would come here for this. This is, and then it said some naughty things to me. And I said, hey, I don't want to talk to you no more. I want to talk to the girl. And all of a sudden, this girl, she kind of came to, I was like, hey, <laughs> you know some things that happen? And she literally goes, I know. I go, okay. I said, okay, I don't care about all the demon stuff. Can I get to know you? Just, I mean, I want to know who you are. Tell me about it. And she goes, what? She literally said this. You want to get to know me? We're in the cell. She goes, no one's ever asked about who I am. I said, I want to know. Tell me about your mom and dad, where you're from, what do you struggle with outside of, you know, Satan? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> you know, the obvious. Uh, and she said, my father was a Satanist. He worships the devil. He dedicated to me to the devil as a child. She goes, him and my mom are divorced. She goes, as a little kid, I, he would just take me from cars to hotel rooms and then bring me and drop me off in my mom's yard at the apartment and I'd be in a dirty doctor with lice. She says, I've been abused so many times, I stopped counting. She goes, I got pregnant at 12. I think it was 12, 
12 and 13. She goes, so I naturally just went toward darkness. So I allowed this demon to come give me strength, power, and all this. And she goes, I named my baby Devin, and I put him in a circle with candles, and I offered him up to Satan as well. Sorry, Devin, if you're in it. It has nothing to do with you. Just, it was a play on words for her. And I was like, oh, dang. And guess what? Anybody can lie. But I went and checked it out. She had a baby. Everything was true. The dad was a devil worshiper. And the mom, not much more helpful. I told her, I said, I hate seeing you in bondage. Because you know this demon will ultimately want to kill you to destroy your life. I said, do you want to be free? And she goes, no. I was like, dang. All right. I was going to give you a discount for being a demon buster, but no. You change your mind. It's full price. I didn't say that because I don't charge for crushing demons. It's just fun. I don't like demons. And uh, so... The next day I came in, I went to the hotel room. I sent out a little prayer thing because I believe in prayer. Even when you don't feel like it's going to work. I was like, hey, pray. I got this little girl. She's 15. Her name, you know, her name is Chris. <laughs> pray. So I go, I go back the next day. It's a big prison. The guards go, she's waiting for you. I was like, is it her? or?" <laughs> they go, no, it's her. I said, oh, all right. So I go back. There she's waiting for me. And it's an orange jumpsuit. She goes, hi. I said, hey, how's it going? She goes, good. I said, really? She goes, I haven't slept that good in years. I slept so peaceful. I was like, wow. I said, okay. I said, um, well, is today the day you want to be free? And she, she said, let me ask you a question first, mister. And I've never had a young person ask me this question. She goes, if I give my life to the light, fully surrendered to the light, and darkness leaves, are you Christians going to forget about me? Because he won't. You think she knew how real the battle is? You think she had a real understanding of good and evil? I looked at her and said, I can't speak for the rest of all the Christians because some are fake, some are hypocrites, but I can tell you for me, I will never forget you. She goes, all right, I'm ready. I said, okay. And then I was thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know what I do now. Uh, where's a prayer? Where's the demon prayer in the back of the Bible? I don't, and I just said, Lord, you got to help me with this one. And the first thing I thought was like, okay, we need some pigs. I think we need some, I think there's a thing where the, you got to get, get out and into the, and there's no, and uh, I was like, there's no pigs? What did y'all have for breakfast? There's some bacon? I'll take bacon. I'll, I'll bacon it and flush it down a commode. I'll do Mix in the water deal. I'm not good at this. I ain't trying to pretend. But no bacon, no pigs. Just pray for her. And I said, all right, here we go. So I sat down. I said, well, hold my hands. And she had little bitty hands. And she grabbed my three fingers like this. And I just said, in the name of Jesus, we bind every spiritual force of darkness. And I plead the blood of Jesus over this girl. And all of a sudden, her body arched up. And she started squeezing my fingers so hard, I speeded the prayer up. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for the girl. We're going to get her free. Free, thank you for the food. In Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, it was like so painful. I was like, she's going to break my knuckles. I'm like, ah, I got to walk out of here like, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> Successful day of ministry. Mm. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, good night. And you know what? As soon as I finished praying, her body slumped down, her hair dropped, and I watched the biggest alligator tears drop out of her eyes onto her orange jumpsuit. And she looked up at me, and her eyes were clear. It was gone. No more 
oppression, no more demonization. She was free. And she gave her life to Jesus right then. And you know what? When she got out of jail, she never went back. She's like 35 now. And we've stayed in contact for many, many years. It's good to be free. And y'all are not beyond becoming influenced and oppressed by the wicked one. Some of you struggle with things in your life you haven't even considered. Could this be demonic? Could this be evil telling me weird thoughts? You know how you can tell if it's a demonic thought in your mind? You want me to give you a little cheat sheet? You got to listen to how the thought is formed. So girls or guys, if you hear this voice, you're ugly. No one will ever love you. You piece of trash. Yeah, you feel, if it's all this, you'll never accomplish nothing. They don't like you. If you hear thoughts like that in your mind, that's not you. Because you would say, oh, I need to, I need to change my hair. I need to, that's evil whispering darts into your mind. Doesn't mean you're possessed, but I tell you what, oppression can accomplish about the same thing if it gets you to move. You, you, you just need to kill yourself. It's never going to get better. You just need to, when you hear you, that is an evil entity, and you better fight back. You better recognize it. You better resist it. You better use aggressive prayer. And guess what? Nobody else is going to be around typically if you have somebody you can call or text and say, help, hey, pray for me. I do that to this day. When I feel like I'm under oppression, man, I, I, man, I text a friend. I'm like, hey, one of my friends, he's our COO, our chief operations officer in our ministry, and he retired from Delta. Have you ever heard from Delta? You ever heard of that organization, anybody? It's a special operations team. Okay. Oh, we got to educate y'all. Yeah. They're a wonderful group of people that kill really bad people all over the world. Some people need to be killed. I, I text him, I said, hey man, I ain't doing too good. I just got pulled over on the 101. I was doing 100 and I think 15 miles an hour. Don't judge me. I just got back from Iraq. My mind wasn't processing things. My wife's in the car and I'm flying. I got my dog with me. And my wife's just, all she's doing is reaching over and just gently stroking my arm. She goes, honey, you're, you're not there anymore. I'm like, I know that. But I can't get around another car because it could be a V-bed and there could be stuff on the side of the road. And I just, we, we got to move, we got to move and groove to get there. She's like, you ain't there, honey. And thank goodness a cop pulled me over. And when he pulled me over, I actually got out and said, hey, officer. And he's like, hey, stay in your car. Like, I know, I train you guys. Uh, I'm not doing well right now, just my mind. I know I'm heavy. He goes, where were you? I said, I was just in Mosul. And thank goodness he saw my dog. He sees Scout and he goes, Nice dog. And he was a veteran. He goes, take the next exit and get your stuff together. I said, thank you. Took the exit, called my friend. I was telling you about Colonel Teagues. I said, hey, man, I am. I called him. I, said, I texted him and called him. I said, man, my mind, ooh, I, I feel I'm under. I can't explain what I'm, the pressure I'm under. He goes, do you feel like you're in a tornado? I said, yeah, I'm kind of spinning. And he goes, do you feel like you're riding a bull in a tornado? <laughs> I said, yeah. He goes, do you feel like you're in a tornado riding a bull upside down? I said, yes. <laughs> Guess what he said to me? He goes, I miss those days. <laughs> I was like, you're crazier than me, man. Do you miss those days? Come and get some. And just when somebody will pray for you, it can break demonic oppression on your life. 
And look, you don't have to go to Iraq to feel this type of oppression. You don't, I mean, you can come from a great home and struggle. Some of you know injustices as a person. And gals, let me say this before I, I kind of wind down and tell you a, a, a quick testimony in my life of where I came from. Ladies, I have three daughters. That's why I love girls, way more than guys. Guys, all I call you to is manhood. I don't deal with boys. I call young men to be men. And what you, sh I'll tell you what you need to be. But ladies, here's, here's a little secret. How, how to be, find the right friends, guy friends. Look at me. Be very careful for the nice ones. <laughs> nice guys want something. They're nice for a reason. And when things don't turn out the way they want, <clears throat> they're not nice anymore. Hey, that's gold right there. I right, believe me. Gals, what you look for? Hey, look at me. Are you breathe? Just breathe. <laughs> uh, this is she's getting set free right now. G hey, gals, what you want is a kind guy. You want a kind young man who will be kind to you because it is about you, not him. Say amen. amen. And you demand it, ladies, because you're valuable enough, because you are. Hey, guys, this is to y'all. I got two sons. One of them's here with me today. Uh, one's in high school, and one's done growed up and gave me grandbabies. Listen, young men, you need to reject passivity. Stop being passive. Be a leader. Stop being sucked into weakness of mind. Become dangerous and become a gentleman. I think dangerous gentlemen is one of the best things you could ever become. Smart in your mind, strong in spirit, and tough with grit. The Christian church has taught a lot about grace, but not much about grit. And in the day and age we live in, you don't think it changed like that in the U.S.? It could. If I took you on a plane ride, you see how most of the world lives. So don't become soft and weak with the nonsense on the internet. And girls, don't compare yourself. I just saw a video on Instagram, because I have an Instagram. Yeah, I do. And uh, yeah, I, I make reels. Sometimes in my stretchy pants. And I, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something right now. It's the Lord's chips. No, I'll tell you something right now. They have filters that if you don't even know what the girl or the guy looks like, it, and you saw them in real life, you, they could rob a bank with a filter and you'd never catch them. <laughs> I'm like, what, what in the world? How is this possible? So girls, don't compare yourself to, it took me a long time. Any, I'd see guys who are all buff and you know, I'm like, how does he stay in that shape? Man, I'm, I'm almost 57. And they got filters for your body. I said, I'm going to use them. Dang, I, I'm going to stop working out. <sighs> Last thing. And this is, this is based on my life story. And, um, and I have a book. I, I wrote a book. It's at an eighth grade level, but I wrote it. And there's lots of pictures. Uh, <laughs> uh, and actually, I have uh, a table in the lobby with uh, my book on there. And today we're selling it for only $19.95. Or how about $29.95? What's the money? Uh, are your parents rich? You know, you're, you're a private school? Actually, you know what? We brought books as a gift free for every one of you. All right. All right. <laughs> You're going to see some good pictures in there. But this is what I'll leave you with. I hold the world record for the fastest gun disarm. Some of you have seen it on the internet, a single and then two guys with a gun. And I, I, I thank God for that. Uh, and, but the best way, and I love shooting. Mr. Kelly over here, former SEAL team member and a sniper, he can reach out and touch somebody. I just posted a video where I, I did a mile shot, 
you know, with a 300 Win Mag. I love shooting. And then I love blade work. We have all those things in common, don't we? We're brothers from a different mother. Listen, the best weapon I've ever used is the weapon of forgiveness. Hey, please, I only have a couple of minutes left, a few more minutes. Forgiveness. People actually start to turn me off when I say forgiveness. First of all, forgiveness is not what you think. It's not an act of weakness to forgive somebody. Forgiveness doesn't mean you actually trust that person once you forgive them. But forgiveness is giving up your right to hurt someone back for hurting you. I speak from experience. As a kid, I was sexually abused, beaten, and tortured. Then I was left for dead in a commercial cooler. I know what it's like to be electrocuted, dunked in a tub underwater until I passed out, and to have my stepfather resuscitate me, and the first words I heard was, boy, don't you forget who gives you life. I was tied down as a kid, and water was poured in my chest because I have a concave chest. I was so super insecure as a kid. And he would take a, a taser, it was a cattle prod, but a taser, and he would shock me where he wouldn't touch the skin to burn me, but only in the water to give me the electrical shock. And when he released it, you would actually don't take a breath in. Air comes out of your lungs because it was trapped because you see it coming. So when he released it, air comes out, and he said this, boy, you know what that sound is? It's the sound of hope leaving your body. Don't ever tell anybody what I've done. A lot of bad things happened to me. My mother was married six times. I went to 14 schools by the time I graduated from high school, lived in 17 houses. So trust me, you're not sitting out there if you've suffered any form of abuse or the pain of feeling rejected or divorced, parents or single moms or whatever. I get it. My only hope was Jesus. And I'd heard about him a lot. But it wasn't until I decided to really start following him. And sadly, it wasn't in high school. For me, it was when I joined the Marine Corps. When I was in the Marines, my biological dad sent me a letter. And he goes, son, I know I've never been there for you. And I was actually mad that he called me son. The night my mom got pregnant, he straddled her and put a pistol to her head and rosary beads down her throat. That was the night of my conception. And now this man's going to call me son. He was a drug dealer and a pimp. And I, I, I hated him. But the guy I hated most was the stepfather who abused me. Hated him. Everybody sees my gun disarm, and people love it. And I developed skill sets because I was driven. But very few people say, why did you get that fast? How did you, what motivated you, what inspired you to get that fast? Because my fastest speed hit is I can hit a person eight times in just out a second. And I tell people who ask me, at seven years old, my stepfather put me in a chair and put a pistol to my head with the hammer back and his finger on the trigger. It was a revolver, and I could see the rounds. And he said he was going to kill me if I ever told anybody. And he would tap me to the side of my head with that gun. And as a kid, I swore one day I would grow up and become so fast and so good, no one would ever be able to put a pistol to my head again. No one. My dad, who wrote me that letter, said he said, I know you think I'm crazy. I'm like, yeah, you crazy. You, you were in a mental hospital. The same mental hospital my grandfather died in. I just thought we had a timeshare deal. You know, I was like, when, when do I go? It's a family tradition. And I know about psychiatric care. The trauma that I experienced as a kid affected me as an adult and then my time in the Marines and this life. 
I had 123 visits to a trauma specialist in nine months. I've been on Depakote, Depakine, Prozac, Zoloft, Lithium. When they talk about being crazy, hey, I tell people I was crazy with a K. Mayor of Crazyville. There were times I never thought I'd come back. But God, God is able to do above and beyond what we ever thought. When I got saved in the Marine Corps and I surrendered my life to the Lord, he, I, was, I certainly wasn't perfect, but one of the scriptures that made a difference for me, and this is a scripture I give you all today, is Romans 12, 2. What does that scripture say? Do you all know that one? You can say it out loud if you know it. Anybody know it? Romans You got it. And I don't know how many, man. I don't know how many grades you failed being a senior with that beard, but I'm praying for you to graduate one day, man. And you're a spiritual giant, so it's worth failing however many times you've failed. I love it, Romans 12 too. God's not giving me a, oh, sorry, that's my other favorite one. Don't be conformed to this world any longer, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you, not your youth pastor, not you will be able to know what's the perfect, good, acceptable will of God, something like that. God's will for your life is the most important thing you should be seeking, period. So forgiveness, this is it. Later in life, when I'm all healed up and God's done some things, I'm I, I, I was working for a ministry called Focus on the Family with Dr. James Dobson. Uh, I was his assistant. That's how bad I was. God had to put me with that man to raise a family. I mean, I was like, oh, okay, I'll just put your books by my kids' heads. And I was speaking down south, and I'm driving. Hey, look at me. I, this is exactly what I'd tell you if we were in your living room eating popcorn and hanging out. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, go find that man. Find your stepfather. I was like, I rebuked that thought right now in the name of Jesus. I ain't find that man. Last I heard, he had gone to prison. And I hate pedophiles. That's why I still hunt them. All over the world and here in the U.S. My dog's got a patch that says, pedophile hunter. I think we should protect children, don't you? I had a moment where I had to decide, am I going to obey God or not? And I decided to obey him. So I found out where he was. He had been to prison, and he had got out. He was living in a little trailer down by the river. I remember knocking on his door. He was shocked. And uh, he's looking at me. He's looking up now. He ain't looking down. I'm full grown. A Marine, a black belt, actually a master of martial arts. And you know what he tries to do? He tries to intimidate me. I'm like, are you out of your ever living mind? And I could see he had a scar on his chest. He had just had open heart surgery. I'm like, oh man, I will unzip you. There ain't nobody around. I'll make that thing look like an accident. <laughs> 911? Yeah, my stepdad had a slip and die. I mean, slip and fall. And he died. I'm trying resuscitation. Mm. Mm. God gave me grace to forgive him to give up my right to hurt him back for hurting me. And I was in his hospital room when he was dying. And I would share scripture with him every day. I'd go in there, because I told him, I said, you're dying and you're going to hell. Is that too direct? The man's dying, he is going to hell. He has rejected Jesus Christ and anything good and right. 
And he let me read scripture to him. He goes, go ahead. And then one morning before I'd never see him again at 4 a.m., I wake up, get out of my bed. We were visiting where he was at. And I start praying, God, please just save him. I actually don't want him to go to hell. He deserves it. But then probably so do I. If it's not by your grace and what you did on the cross, who of us is worthy of heaven? My wife got out of bed. She was praying with me. We both wept. The next morning, I walked into the hospital room, and I said, hey, he goes, he had a new nurse. He goes, nurse, this is my son. I thought he was my real dad as a kid growing up. Nobody told me until later. Surprise. And he goes, nurse, this is my son. I'm proud of him. He kind of became like a preacher. <laughs> and I agreed. I was like, yeah, kind of. He goes, he's been worried about my eternity, but he doesn't have to worry anymore. I made it right with God last night. It was such a holy moment. The nurse actually backed out of the room. And I was like, holy smokes. And I, I knew, I knew instantly why God brought me back into his life. I said, Lord, I'm done. You did what you wanted. I obeyed. I'm done. What, what do I say to him? What are my last words to him? Because I'm going to say it and I'm walking out. And I felt like the Lord said, tell him you love him. I said, Dad, I love you. And he turned and he looked at me and he said, Boy, I love you too. And then I grabbed the pillow. Emma. I, <laughs> I lifted his neck up. It was a Mike Lindell pillow. And I made him comfortable. Yeah, that's what I did. And he died comfortably. That's wrong. Why y'all laughing? Because it's funny. It's about freedom. Not only did he get free, but this man got free. Because part of my heart that was angry and bitter and hard toward him was keeping love for my children and my wife and receiving love. Stay free. Whether it's Lucy in Iraq who's free from ISIS, whether it's, you know, Christy with a K in the youth prison, whether it's my stepfather, God wants you free. And the way you do it is Romans 12, 2, don't be conformed to this world any longer, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This world is after your mind. Don't let the enemy or this world get it. Can I pray? All right, Lord, thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for each person here. Thank you for those watching this later. And God, I do pray if anyone doesn't know you in a personal way, maybe they're just religious, maybe they just go to school, but they've actually never committed their life to you to be truly forgiven and put their faith and trust in you in a way that their life changes, I pray they would today. If there's anybody here that you would say, Victor, would you pray for me? I feel like God... Spirit is saying, surrender. Surrender everything to me today. Become my disciple. Follow me. Depart from sin. Follow me. If that's you, can I pray for you? This is where you have to not worry about anybody. If that's you, I want to pray for you. Would you lift your hand up real high, and I'll pray for you. God bless you. God bless you and you. Who else? God bless you back there. Good. If God's speaking to you, don't care about what people think to your left or your right. Just lift your hand up real high, and I'll pray for you. God bless you. Good. God bless all of y'all. Wow. Okay, great. Great. God bless you, girl. Good. God bless you. No, good. God bless you. All right. Enough hand raising. Let me pray. Lord, for those that have indicated their need, I'm going to pray for them right now. 
And if you raised your hand or you want to or you didn't, but you want to, stand to your feet and I'm going to pray for you. Stand right now. Just stand up right where you are. Good. Good. This is where you find out where the rubber meets the road. Stand up and I'll pray for you. If you need to come back to the Lord, you say, I feel like I know him, but I'm away from him. Please pray for me. I need to be forgiven and walk with him. Stand up where you are right now, and I'll pray for you. Hurry, because I'm over my time. Good, good, good. Of course, of course. It's a Christian school. You think everybody's walking tight with the Lord? No, the enemy is after you. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Who else, before I pray, just stand to your feet. Don't care about anybody else. Just say, pray for me, Victor. I really, good, good, good. All right, this is great. Right now, I'm going to pray. Anybody else? Don't care. Stand. Be brave. Good. Be courageous. Stand. Stand. I love it. I love it. And this is where you develop courage. You think I developed faith in ISIS? In the moment, no way. It was small decisions I made to trust and obey God. He's the one that gave me confidence and courage. Last time, anybody else? Before I pray right now. Stand to your feet. Three, two, one. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for each person that has stood. Those that are watching, God, I pray that you forgive them of their sins. I pray that you cleanse them. I pray, God, that you would make them new. Fill them with your spirit. Give them eyes to see and ears to hear like no one else by the power of your Holy Spirit. Let them be victorious. Continue to train them. Transform their mind. Wash them clean. Let them live a life that's pleasing unto you, and I thank you in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, but let's give them a hand. Thank y'all so much for the opportunity to be here today. You, uh, you do get a book out in the back, and uh, I'll put, how many of you would like to follow my dog on Instagram? Come on, come on, I wanna, I, I wanna, I wanna see a whole new bunch of followers for Scout. And, and y'all want to hear something great about Scout? Yeah, She's free of cancer. <laughs> she had a radical surgery, and about a month ago, they declared her all clean, no more cancer. So she beat ISIS, and she beat cancer. God bless you guys. Y'all, can we, can we give Victor a big thank you? Just a ASB is headed out, not everybody else just yet. Um, hey, obviously, we've been talking about what we're saved from. Y'all, don't forget what you're saved for. God's Word says that we're saved for good works. Saved for good works. And I know there's a lot of people in this room that you're like, man, yeah, I know I'm saved from my sin. That's awesome. That's the beginning. God has so many good things planned for y'all. I just want to challenge y'all to walk in that obedience today. Victor's going to be around. Make sure you grab a book. Y'all are dismissed.